Здравствуйте, мои дорогие подписчики! Вы на канале Дневник Актрисы в Голливуде и с вами я, Анна Орис, и юрист киноиндустрии Ларри Уэйнберг. Тема сегодняшнего эфира – кто такой entertainment lawyer и зачем он нужен актеру? Так, минуточку, а вы подписаны на мой канал? Потому что если нет, то срочно подписывайтесь, потому что я абсолютно уверена, что вы еще ни разу не видели интервью с адвокатом киноиндустрии. Хочу вам немного рассказать о Ларри, прежде чем я задам ему вопросы. Ларри родился в Бруклине, отучился в Нью-Йорке в колледже Бостонского университета, степень в области телерадиовещания и кино. Также он окончил юридическую школу в Лайола Мари Маунт в Лос-Анджелес, специализация в области развлечений. На данный момент Ларри – ведущий преподаватель Бостонского университета и юрист в сфере развлечений. Он работал над многими известными кинокартинами и самыми популярными медиаразвлекательными компаниями, такими как Netflix, HBO, Sony и многие-многие другие. Hi, Larry. I'm glad that you're here. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. I'm excited to, have, to be interviewed. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I have a few questions. Not so many, just a few. How many years you have been in your industry? In, uh, in the film and yeah. entertainment industry, I've been... Almost 30 years, but doing exactly what I'm doing now, probably about 25 years. So I started out, you know, as a lawyer, uh -huh. and I I did what's called litigation. So I was in um, like um, disputes when uh, people got into arguments and yeah. uh, had disputes and uh, disagreements. Uh, they would fight in court. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, law lawsuits. And yeah. so I started doing that, and then I sort of moved into transactional law, deal making. And so for you know about 25 years, I've been doing deals and helping people uh, create content and get movies and television shows, and you know produced and, yeah. and books published. And so it's long time. Yeah. 25 years. 25 oh my years, God. Yeah. So, uh, but how do you work? I mean. I want to know step by step from who you get work from producers or from production so mm -hmm. from where yeah, most of my clients are creators they're they're producers okay. and uh, production companies producers writer producers director writer producers um, my specialty is helping create content okay. and doing the deals that make content that uh, lead to the creation of film programs, television, books, uh, any kind of content, sometimes even plays and digital programming, online programming. So most of my business is divided up into producer-artist representation. So I'll, I'll represent producers and, and writers and directors and some actors and yeah. book authors. And then I also represent production companies mm -hmm. and financiers of, uh, of film and television programming. And so I will help them do the, the financing paperwork and also all of the, the writer agreements, director agreements, actor agreements, and the you know, yeah, cinematographer and editor. It's a lot of work. It's, it is. And yeah. it's the closest. And then um, the other part of my business is called production legal work. So when a movie happens or a television show happens, I will represent the movie or the program itself. And that involves all of the financing paperwork and all of the production paperwork. And that's the closest, even though I'm a lawyer, it's the closest to producing that a lawyer can be. That's okay. why I like it. That's why I really, really enjoy what, what I do. But how do you choose project? I mean, if you get many projects, you can take everything. No, I can't. How you choose? I do select which projects I work on. I can't work on everything. Yes. You're right. It's too much. It's a yeah. lot of work. And I only have a small number of resources. Sometimes when I get very busy, I will hire uh, or work with a, another attorney. I'll yeah. bring in another attorney to help me. So the projects that I select are the ones that I actually will read script yes, sure. and I will will meet with the filmmakers or the creators and if a project is you know interesting to me and I like it I will actually you know select that project sometimes I'll do a project for business okay. it's like you know hey it's good money 
And maybe Some money. I yeah, I, maybe I don't love the project so much, but I'll do it. Sometimes I'll do a project for small for less money because I love the project. Yeah. So there's sort like of a, a trade. Yeah. Oh, I love. Sometimes I love. Oh, I always read. I read everything. Sometimes my clients are surprised because they think, "Oh, I'm just a lawyer. I just need to do the deals." I always read the scripts and. As a lawyer, you also need to understand the scripts and the yeah, issues in the actually scripts. Actually, right. Yeah, yeah there I are a lot of that. legal issues with regards to yeah. uh, when you produce content. And how many projects you can have at the same time? The same time, in development and um, not in production, I can work on 20 to 30 projects at 20. the same time. But when when something goes into production, I only really can work on two at a time yes. when they're in production. Um, I've done a couple of times three at the same time, but it made my, it, I went crazy. Yeah. It was too much. I almost had a nervous breakdown. And what is your favorite uh, movie that you worked before? Oh, my favorite movie. It's a hard one. I have a lot of movies that I love, but my first movie that I ever did is one of my favorites of all time. It's called The Last Supper. Okay. And uh, that starred Cameron Diaz and incredible cast of actors, Annabeth Gish and uh, Courtney Vance and Jonathan Penner and Ron Eldard and Mark Harmon and Bill Paxton, Jason Alexander. It was an amazing movie and it was an incredible experience because it was my first, but also it was an amazing story. It was directed by a uh, named Stacy Title and she did an incredible job with it and it was written by a, a guy named Dan Rosen who I met through my mother yeah. who knew his mother and so I love that project it will always have a you know a strong place in my heart more recently I worked on a movie called Captain Fantastic with Viggo oh, Mortensen and an amazing movie amazing film and most recently I would put very high on my list uh, a movie called Nine Days Nine and Nine Days was at Sundance this year at the Sundance Film Festival and it won the Best Screenplay Award for the bet for the festival of 2020 and yeah, it's going to be yeah this is a very very special movie it's going to be released in the early part of 2021 and it's a movie that is a perfect perfect little movie right now and the director is a from Brazil and he comes from the commercial world and this was his first feature film, and it stars Zazie Beetz and uh, Winston Duke and Bill Sarsgaard. It's an amazing cast. I love this movie. It's special. It's, okay. it's going to be a special so we're film. We're going to see it. Oh yeah, nine nine days. Nine days. Nine days. How you usually work with the actors, and actually, why does an actress need entertainment lawyer? Okay, very important. I work with actors in two ways. Okay. Two, two different ways. Uh, when I represent the actor, yeah. I will negotiate the contract on behalf of the actor uh, with the production company or the studio or the network. It's very important to understand uh, the key elements to yeah. an actor agreement, the schedule, the, the specific role and the amount of time that the actor is going to be used for and the credit is very important, obviously compensation, benefits like perks, mm -hmm. uh, hair, makeup and wardrobe and consultation rights with regards to their look, travel if they have to travel, travel expenses, accommodations. All of this is very important. So when I'm representing the actor with the against the the network or the studio or the producer, I have to make sure that the actor is taken care of and all you know. And, and yeah, everything. On the other side, though, I work more on the other side where I represent the producer, the studio, or the network, uh -huh. and I'm negotiating with the actor's agent and manager oh, and right. lawyer. But it's all the same. It's you all the same issue. Yeah. yeah. An actor agreement is very, very specific. There, you know, you there are things that are unique to an actor agreement that don't exist with a writer agreement or a director agreement or a producer agreement. Um, you know, an example would be: Is there going to be nudity or is there a sex, you know, simulated sex scene? Those are important to understand. And if there are, you have to be very, very careful, and you have to frame that the scenes and where the actor might be, you know, nude or have simulated sex. And this is important to make sure that the actor is protected always. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I agree with you. How do you work right now? I mean, during the pandemic. Oh, it's. Uh, I've been fortunate. It's hard. It's been hard. 
Uh, the biggest difference between before the quarantine and the COVID pandemic and after has been the amount of production, physical production. Production stopped for the last four or five months because there's, you know, once things are in production, there are a lot of people right. working on the set in a small space. And so that was something that became very, very difficult. And uh, the industry and the unions uh, that, that uh, work in the, in the film and TV uh, wanted to make sure that their, client, you know, their members and the clients are protected in a safe environment. I've been fortunate uh, I work with a lot of producers uh, that are developing material. I work in an, uh, with an animation studio, and my animation studio has been very, very active, mm -hmm. so I've been very busy. And then before production stopped, with before quarantine, yeah. uh, I was working on several movies that were just finishing. Oh. So during quarantine, I've been working very, very intensely on about four or five projects that are in post-production that are finishing and then have sold and right now i'm extremely busy because uh, one movie called silk road just sold to lionsgate yeah. Yeah. Uh, another movie i'm delivering the movie to amazon studios yeah another movie was just bought by netflix called bruised and that movie is being finished now and so there's a lot of work that goes on, that's involved in post-production. And then when somebody buys it, when a studio or a network uh, or a streamer buys the movie, there's a lot of work to basically deliver, to turn, to give the movie to Netflix or to right. Sony or to Universal or to Amazon. There's so much paperwork involved. And so I've been very busy and fortunate. And we just got um, this past week, yes. the first movie, into production oh. and we're one of the first movies back in production in the state of georgia not georgia the country near russia <laughs> near, near something that's uh but the state of georgia in the united states and we finished our first week and that movie is called southern gospel it's a musical oh so, wow very very cool very so, exciting i want to see this have you ever been with the russian projects oh yeah actually yeah. i have yeah. okay. i've worked on several russian projects i have a client who's a pretty significant uh, Russian director, okay. writer, and producer. Okay. His name is Marius Weisberg, Marius Balshunis, Marius Weisberg, he, he's used both names, and he directs a lot of uh, big uh, Russian comedies. Uh, I work with him on his American films, and also I've been working with him on adapting uh, his Russian language movies into other languages, oh. into Chinese, into, in, into English, he works with the top uh, Russian actors, and and uh, he's fantastic. He's kind of um, he's big comedy. Uh, he's done um, Hitler Goes Kaput, the Love awesome. in the City series. Uh, he, I think Napoleon, kind of a follow up to the Hitler Goes Kaput movie. So he's a big co co comedian. I did. Uh, I worked with an animation, uh, a Russian animated movie that was being adapted into an English, to English language. It was a beautiful little movie. It was about the dogs that go into space. Yeah. You know, not the Laika, I think was the name Laika, of the dog. Laika, yes. But this one was uh, not Laika because the dogs, because Laika didn't come back. But like, these okay. dogs come back. Oh, okay. These, these animals. It was very, very sweet. So I have worked. I've been to Russia. And, okay. Uh, how many times you went? You went a couple times. What do you think? How much the film industry changed over the 20 years? It's uh, it's mm. became harder, or it's became easier, or just different? It's not harder. It's just different. It's different. It's because there's been a, a shift where movies and TV shows are getting made, and how many. Obviously, the old studio system, the traditional big studios, yeah. Disney and Fox who are now together, and Paramount, and Warner Brothers, and Sony. The studios, when I first started my career, were making almost everything. They made the largest number of movies and TV right. programs. Now, more independent productions are happening. Um, more movies and TV shows are international are getting made and being acquired. And the biggest change, really the most significant change for the entertainment industry is the rise of the, uh, the digital players, the, the platforms, the, the Netflixes and Amazons and Hulus, Google and YouTube, HBO, yeah, yeah uh, Facebook even. 
Uh, it's much easier today than when I started, one, to produce something because you can produce a, a feature film with a camera like the one that, that I'm being you know, filmed right now. You can produce a feature film, beautiful quality, edit and post That's the entire true. movie on your own Apple computer and put it out into the world. It's so much easier and less expensive to produce content and to put it out into the world because you can put anything onto, onto Facebook, onto YouTube. You can create your own channels. Yeah. It's harder though to make money. Oh, that's the hardest thing to monetize, to monetize your content. That's the hardest you're right, part. You're right. It's also much easier, I think, for uh, writers and directors and actors to expose themselves and their work to the world yeah. because you can create your own web series and you can write it and direct it and star in it and then put it out into the universe on a digital platform like a Facebook or like a YouTube and people will watch it and people will respond to it and you can have an interaction and see if people actually like it. Yeah. But how do you make money? This is a big question. This is the trick. This is the challenge. Yes, um, so you're right. More and more content is being created than ever because of the digital platforms, yeah. for sure. I agree. So I have a last question. Sure. It's a private question. Ah, it's a private question. <laughs> yes, you are nervous. <laughs> no, it's not private. Actually, I just want to ask I'm nervous you. right now. You I have know, to drink. Yeah. Yes, yeah. give me a second. I'm very, very <laughs> nervous about this private question. I mean, <laughs> have you ever thought change your career or you all the time you was happy that you choose exactly this yeah, career well part of my career which i didn't talk about yeah. um, is that i teach i've yes. been teaching i've been uh, lecturing for boston university which is where i went to school i've been uh, teaching students from boston university for 18 years now and the students who want to get into the entertainment industry um, they're going to college in Boston and, I, and other students from other colleges as well, around the world actually, who find the Boston University program and then they come to live in Los Angeles for, for the semester. It's basically semester abroad. So, um, you know, my son went to Paris to study business in Paris for his semester abroad. My daughter uh, went to study graphic design and graphic arts in Venice, Italy. They, those were their interests. But there are students who go to Boston University or other colleges around the world that want to get into the entertainment industry. And Los Angeles is really, you know, the most opportunity exists in the world to be in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles. Yes. So they come and they live here and they study here for a whole semester, four months, and then they take classes at night. And these are the classes, I teach two of these classes during the fall and the spring. And in the summertime, there was a graduate school program that I've taught uh, as well. Um, I love what I do okay. because I love being able to see all the effort and all the hard work that I put in and that my colleagues put in and the people who I represent and work with. And then there's a movie, there's yes. a TV show, there's a book. Yes. It's nice to see the, you know, the, the product, the fruits of your labor, but it's hard. And if I'm going to change my career, Right now, my career is probably about 70% law and 30% teaching. Mm -hmm. I think when I get a little bit older, and when you ask me if I'll change my yes. career, I, I'm going to flip that. Right, you want to more teach. I'll be more in the education and teaching and less in the day-to-day -day law. But I'll always be a lawyer and I'll always have a book or a film. So you are happy with it. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's, it's fun. And the people, the best part really are, the most interesting people I think that I've met in my life are in the, in the entertainment industry. The most colorful, most interesting, and every project has its own universe. Every project has a history and a story, and I learn. Every time I read a script, oh, I learn something. Every time I meet a director and they tell me what they're working on, oh, I learn something. Very, very interesting people. And so I love that. I love helping people create content so that it lives. But it's very hard, long hours. And, but I also love teaching. I absolutely love my teaching. And so I kind of have three sort of 
legacies, you know? I have my children, my own children, and they're off and they're running and they're into their worlds. And then I have all my students, and then I love being helping them launch their careers and get them into and their world. And then the movies. And the two babies. I have three children, three kinds of children. Yeah. So that's what I'll do. Yeah, at some point I'll, I'll start focusing more on my, on my teacher. Yeah. Thank you so much, Larry, for this interview. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Спасибо. Спасибо. Друзья, я уверена, вам понравилось интервью. Ларри очень интересный человек. А теперь ставьте колокольчик, ставьте лайк, задавайте вопросы, пишите темы, которые вам интересны. И подписывайтесь на мой канал Дневник актрисы в Голливуде. До новых встреч. Пока-пока.